All right, on Saturday, NASA will try once again to launch its Artemis One mega rocket on a journey for the history books. And one Georgia Tech professor will be watching with interest. Some of his work will be part of America's return to the moon. 11 Live's Jerry Carnes has his story. Time for another giant leap. As a young man, Dr. Glenn Lightsey was fascinated by Neil Armstrong's small step for man and giant leap for mankind. America's early trips to the moon are part of the reason he pursued a career in space exploration. I remember seeing the astronauts driving and the lunar vehicle, and I thought that was a pretty amazing. Um, I, you know, I just remember the whole kind of celebration. I think that what you know kind of inspired me. Now he's part of the next giant leap. As a professor of space technology at Georgia Tech, Dr. Lightsey was part of a team that developed the propulsion system for one of the satellites on board Artemis One. Those satellites will help the unmanned space mission collect new information about the moon. I'm personally invested in it. It's an incredible feeling when something you built, you know, something you touched with your hands is on that launch. The Apollo missions to the moon 50 years ago were a weekend camping trip when compared to what the Artemis missions will do. The unmanned flight will help prepare for future missions that will place astronauts at the previously unexplored South Pole of the moon. American space explorers will set up a base camp with an eye on the next step, exploring Mars. I just am really excited for humans to be on the moon, habiting the surface for maybe up to a month at a time. I think that will be incredibly exciting. I'm convinced there will be incredible science that we, we don't need, we can't even imagine. The excitement Glenn Lightsey felt about the small step Neil Armstrong took 50 years ago led to his involvement with the giant leap now taking place. It's so cool to see the people behind it. You realize the time and effort it takes and the pressure, not only for the safety of something like this, but $43 billion is the cost of this project. I mean, Ooh. that's some pressure. It is, but it has to be gratifying, you yeah. know, when it just all works out. Can you imagine just how much time and, you know, energy goes into that? So wishing them the best. You know, that temperature sensor that they would have to replace, they would have to roll it off of the launch pad, take it back into the building and then replace that sensor. So they decided, no, nah, that's probably not worth it. <laughs> to do all that. They have a small window, which is at 217 tomorrow. Typically in the afternoon crashing, you notice that's when you get those showers popping mm -hmm. up, but they yeah. have about a good a good 30% chance for a shower, so it's a, it's a good time to do it. Couldn't they just use Flex Seal on that thing? I mean, that, that <laughs> takes care of everything. You know, I was a young little 15-year-old Christopher Clark when I actually went with my science group from high school to see the first space shuttle launch in 1981. Wow. And it was the most fascinating thing I've ever done. I've been a nerd ever since, hooked on science fiction and all things fiction. And I just cannot wait for this rocket to go up to see the landing on Mars and a base on, uh, on, on Mars and the moon. I, I am fascinated with all of this. The producer just had to give us a wrap. I, 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 I want to hear more. I could go on all day. <laughs> it does make you feel like a kid. We hope we get to watch it tomorrow. Yeah.